Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and yesterday I had the good fortune of going to the Philly Area Gaming Expo. This is a new con in the Philly area, and it was a lot of fun. Let's roll it. I never take enough footage at these cons for my liking. Of course, I've been to all of three of them, so I'm still learning the whole process. So I don't have a whole lot of stuff from later in the day at Philly Area Gaming Expo or PAGE, really cool acronym. Uh, but I do have some stuff that got kind of my key feel for the day and some of the fun that I have. So let's take a look at the footage that I have and I'll come back a little bit later to talk about my experience and my thoughts of the con moving forward. Let's go. Okay, it is, what time is it? 6.36 on Saturday morning and uh, we are currently driving down 1.30 to head over to Oaks for the uh, Philadelphia Area Gaming Expo. And uh, I'm not driving, so I can do this. And that's that's Larry. He's my partner hey. in crime for the day. He's one of my players and a neighbor. And uh, I'll be doing updates during the day to see how things are going. But uh, it's really early. And uh, we're going to be playing some AD&D 2nd Edition this morning because my Dungeon Crawl Classics funnel got canceled, which made me sad. Talk to you soon. All right, so I am heading into the Oaks Expo Center. Having some fun. You excited, Larry? Yes. What are you playing today? Uh, playing two. <laughs> we'll see how it works. All right, we are on our way to uh, room E, table three, to play some AD and D second edition. Table three. There, nobody there yet. What time do we start? Eight. What time is it? Seven fifty-six. That's going to be great. So there's our table. It starts in minutes. There's nobody here yet. We're signed up, man. We're signed up. We're going to play. We did indeed play. We had, I believe, six players show up at the table, and I got to play a human druid named uh, Helifrith, which is what I named him. They didn't come with names. Uh, it was an enjoyable experience, and I'm going to introduce you to the rest of the party. He's playing a civilized cleric that I don't like very much. He's good. Wizard, GM, a halfling who thinks everybody has rabies, a fighter, they slash things, an elf who has a morning routine that takes up far too much time, and then Larry is a halfling thief. And we have rolled about eight dice and hit two things. It's been a good time. One of the things about the con is that there was no food inside the expo hall. That was a little bit of a bummer. You had to take a drive to go get lunch. Not terrible. It wasn't that far away, but it, some stuff on site would have been better next year. I don't know if there was contractual issues that they had with that or not, uh, but we ended up going to a local pizza place. It was a lot of fun. A couple miles off of the Expo Hall site. I love going to the local pizza places, especially in this area, because most of the pizza is going to be really, really good. Uh, and this was no exception. Good time for that. When we got back, we spent some time walking through the expo hall, which I wish we would have gotten some more video of as we went through it. Did do one cool interview though. Yeah. You picked this this big science or Star Trek model up at a yard sale. Yep. How much? Uh, you really wouldn't want to know. I do want to know. Fifty bucks. Oh my god! <laughs> so how long have you had it for? Oh, uh, I've had it for over ten years now. Basically, you were relatives of the uh, owner who had died. And they were basically getting ready to throw it out. They were going to throw it out? Yes. No, no, that's wrong. Yes, that's what I saw. Oh, my god! I just gosh. happened to be driving down the road in my 1964 Studebaker eight-bed steak bed truck, eight-foot-long steak bed truck, uh -huh. and happened to go down the wrong street and see this sitting on the front lawn. That is amazing. Yep. And you got this for $50. Yep. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you for bringing it and sharing it. Sure. 
Have a great day. So after my lunch, we were walking the expo hall before our next game started, and I was able to strike up a conversation with John, who is the author of 3 2, one Action. It's a little small zine style game uh, i do believe it's a d10 based i need to go back and look at the rules for that or actually look at his interview uh, but it's really neat and what he was doing is he was selling his adventures and we give away the rule book for free with every purchase and because one of my players got me a book i actually got two rule books this might end up as a giveaway at some point i'm kind of looking forward to that so my friend who's the player uh, he got me this book which is rocket to russia i think this is more spy hijinks See, that's a little thicker, perfect binding there instead of saddle stitch. And uh, that's he said that would take about one or two sessions to run. The one that I thought was absolutely insane was uh, the Hard Times on the Back 9. This is a game which uses the exact same engine as the rest of the game, but you are playing mini golf to save your grandfather's soul because your grandfather sold it to the devil to become the greatest mini golf player of all time. And as soon as he told me that premise, this was the book I was getting at the con. But I had a great conversation with him, and let's take a look at it. My name is John Hambone McGuire. I am the co-creator and co-author of 3 to 1 Action RPG. All right, and what type of system is this? So 3 to 1 Action RPG is an RPG you already know how to play. You roll a single D10 at or below your stat. If you can add 1, 2, or 3, or subtract 1, 2, or 3 or from 10, you already know how to play the game. It is meant to be a system where you could play any kind of adventure you want to play, whether you want to play horror, whether you want to play sci-fi, western, fantasy. If you want to play mini-golf, we got a game for that as well, all within self-contained story adventures that you can run for your friends and family. Cool. You have one minor flaw. What's that? You're assuming Americans can, Americans can do simple subtraction. There it is fair. That, that is a fair that's point. That's a minor, minor point. All right, so yeah. what are the types of adventures that you have set up right now? You did mention mini golf. We do. <laughs> so we have a... Down. Oh, great. We have an adventure called Hard Times on the Back Nine, where you play twins trying to save your great-grandfather's soul from the devil because he sold it to become the world's greatest mini golfer. We have holiday adventures like Heaven Saves Christmas, where you're going to play as some of history's greatest heroes uh, okay. as you try to stop Krampus from destroying Christmas on the island of Point Nemo. We've got stuff for the adults, too. This is the only thing I'd say is R-rated. It's called The Devil in New Jersey. You play a bunch of punk rock kids whose friend goes missing in the Pine Barrens. You find a mysterious VHS tape a few days later, and you go in to find her using the weapons a kid would have at hand, like slingshots, throwing stars, and Roman candles. It's a found footage horror RPG. This is like Predator. You're a crack commando team who goes to a remote island to take out an enemy sniper, and you find something far, far worse in the jungle. Escape from Point Nemo? If you could imagine Gilligan's Island going much worse, that's what Escape from Point Nemo is. <laughs> Children of Whom is a vehicle battle RPG with 38 playable vehicles. You play as teenagers in the wasteland of 2060 Kansas, trying to carve out a slice of turf for yourself. And you're going to start on things like motorbikes and steal your way up to monster trucks. Everything is fully loaded with art, charts, weird weapons, special abilities, and cool narrative threads to pull on, whether you want to run the story as is or you want to tell your own story. That's awesome. And where can folks pick this up if they're not at the Philly Area Gaming Expo? Great question. You can get it at 321actiongames.com or go to Exalted Funeral where you can get physical copies alongside uh, PA, alongside PDFs. Cool. I guess, And so you're distributed or published by Exalted Funeral? We are self-published, but Exalted Funeral's grace is enough to sell our books for us. They're so really good for They that. are such good people, man. Awesome. How long have you been doing this for? We're just three years. Sweet. And yeah. you have plans to expand to a new system, or are you just going to stick with this one for now? So we actually created our own publishing imprint called Ham and Egg Publishing, so we could also do other things other than action. We've done 13 adventures for action so far over the last three years, including solo play pamphlets and full hardcover books. We're going to start doing things, hopefully, for DCC-compatible adventures and some other things as well. we got some cool stories that may not fit within the 3 to one action framework that we know we could uh, really wow people with using things like DCC. Really, really cool. Thank you so much. My Good absolute luck. pleasure. Thank you. Bye. For me personally, one of the most fun aspects of this convention is that I got to meet Dan and Jacob from Avenue Studios in person for the first time. We have interacted a lot online. We're on each other's discords. I was just in a live actual play for Avenue Studios a couple weeks back. And both Dan and Jacob are coming down to my church to run tables at Ecclesicon in April. So this is my first time meeting them in person, and it did not disappoint. Who, who are you? 
Hello, sir. I'm Dan from Avenue Studios. Yeah, and how do I know you? Well, we did go on a cruise ship together in an imaginary world. Yes. And barely... Oh, no, we died. And I hit actually. absolutely nothing yes. and died. And died. <laughs> I was making out with Adam's character as we died, so it was great. <laughs> cool. It was beautiful. I'm having so much fun. Uh, I got to meet Professor Dungeon Master and his son as they walked in. That's awesome. Like, no big deal. We just talked with Steven from Roll for Combat. Yeah. I was playing Play-Doh with him. So That was a lot of fun. <laughs> the, the play, descri please describe the Play-Doh game that you were playing. We, You make your monsters, and based on how good you are at being creative, the GM grants you powers. So it's a D6 game, and you just go around. So Steven killed all my kids' Play-Dohs. So, so you, you now can brag... That yes. your children were killed by Stephen Glicker. My children were killed by the Stephen Glicker. Flew away. And yes, oh, and one of them I'm, escaped. My character was killed by Frank. So Metzler you left last your children night. behind to be killed by Stephen Glicker. Yes. <laughs> this is all in game. This I is not for real life. No. It's all just in Play-Doh game. Just remember, I remember to give my character wings so we could fly away. <laughs> the wings you were insulting when I came over to talk to you about it before you got your powers. They're still these are miserable, out. awful wings. They saved your character's life. <laughs> they looked like good. Dumbo ears. <laughs> What's coming up for Avenue Studios? Uh, in general, we've got to go do some Beck Me with you, actually. Yeah, that's going to be, be fun. And then what else do we have going on? Kingmaker. Kingmaker, oh my gosh, thank you. Yes, we just launched West March Kingmaker game in our Discord. So okay. if you're one of our supporters. Please explain to people what West March is. Yes, West March is, here's Jacob. Hi. Jacob's here to run the West March for Avenue Studios. He's our game Because you don't have anything to do right now. No, no games. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, like West go. March is kind of fun because uh, you can involve a lot of people. What happens is, is a lot of the one shots and stuff, it, the story moves around slowly. So you get to have 100 people participate in it. And okay. it, it affects it a little bit, but um, it's yeah. going to have story points where it moves along. So you're going to able to run lots of side quests and lots of... Uh, the story quests for different groups of people, and it's going to slowly affect it, and it's going to grow that way. Instead yeah. of having just one set group do it all. And you have one, so Jake's the head GM. Yep. Other GMs can come in under him, and he supplies the materials. Cool. GMs say, we're available at this time. Players sign up so you can have multi-GM, multiplayer. And what we'll system? Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Okay, it's a system I have no books for and have never played. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. That's good. Very, you're very to play. nice to be exclusionary. That's <laughs> yeah. nice. You know... You gotta yeah. make choices sometimes, Wes, and <laughs> stick to it. And what, what, to try. what are you doing April 12th through 14th? Oh, yeah. We'll be running games at Ecclesiacon. And what are you running at Ecclesiacon? I'll be running Open Legend. I'm I have so multiple excited. different games Murder Mystery, Monster Hunting, Wizards Thing for a Kids, a Wizards Library. That's gonna be awesome. I already, I already did mine, but I'll say um, it again. Yeah, say it again. I'm having a, a level zero Pathfinder 2nd Edition funnel, and I'm also running some Savage Worlds. So. That's going to be awesome. So he'll kill everyone. All right, I'll so have the heroic go. Then I have <laughs> the question that I've been vexing my mind. Where does the... The, 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 the outfits? Where, no. Well, the outfits are... They're just amazing. Thank you. Thank the, you. Kristen does sounds. Oh, Kristen does sounds. Where does that come from? Well, I always say on all our shows, we use silly voices and dice to tell yes, stories. Yes, you do. So my wife just started making sound effects during our games for stuff. So we're like... We have to make this a thing. And now she's a short on and YouTube. now she's a short on YouTube. It's very nicely done. She, she, we played a game together, and she made dinosaur noises. They were amazing. So if you ever get a chance, check out Jacob's lab. <laughs> They're perfect because they don't sound anything no. like what they do, but you know exactly yeah. what she's trying to do. <laughs> it's so good. And where did, where did she go to school for? Or actually, she just... You're not, yeah. You don't have the microphone. Where, Hello, I don't want to put hi. your kids online. Where did you go for the school of sound design, or is this all just making up inside your head? It's just a personal talent of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was born this way. <laughs> I just, if you if you watch the, the shorts, every time at the end of it, Kristen loses her mind. Just I know. I think I'm so funny, and my children are, are like me. They do the same thing. They laugh at themselves. I'm like, oh. That's what it's like. There you go. Very good. <laughs> All right. So one more question here. So like when Avenue Studios is not playing RPGs and doing live streams in West March, like what is, what's the origin of Avenue Studios? Oh, man. Uh, that's you, baby. Yeah. I've been making videos since I was five and I got a hold of my 
camera, my parents' VHS camcorder. Okay. It was bigger than me. <laughs> There's still some of those videos around. There are. So um, you may bring them to Palmyra and wait, people, that'd be fine. <laughs> that. <laughs> so we've just been making sketches and stuff, and finally we started a campaign in Pathfinder with Zach. And we're like, maybe we should film us playing these because it was Critical Role. Was okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we're weird and nerdy, yeah. so let's just do that. And we've been doing it now for six years. So. Sweet. Like, what is your day job? Because you have like a massive set. <laughs> yes. I have a shelf with books on it, and you have like, I'm constructing my new set. Like, always, it's a beautiful set. I joke that I do whatever I want. You know, Kristen and I, so we both, she's in photography, I'm in film. So, okay. Our ma we have a major client, so we do have photo advertising taking pictures of products and wines and stuff to post on apps. Gotcha. And then I also background in construction. My dad ran a remodeling company for, well, he still is, 40 and years. So I have that. So I build all the sets we do and stuff. Cause they're they're pretty good them. sets. Thank you. <laughs> and then the, and now we have to ask about the uh, outfits. This one is from, my wife was born at the at a zero so 2020 we were supposed to do her surprise birthday obviously no. did it that did not work out so well no. we stuck it in the next year 1920 okay. style so i did this which matches with hers because that's her character from our yeah. outlaws of alkenstar i'm miss evangeline bennett i live in outlaws of alkenstar in or in alkenstar at least in the man of wastes you know that place right <laughs> and I live in Ironside, you know, where we have a little bit more of a uh, ironworks and stuff. <laughs> do you just have like a closet full of this stuff? Yes, we do. <laughs> we have bins and closets of costumes. I say this with great and wondrous affection. You are a complete nerd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. I love it. We just got a bunch more because actually soon we're having a show come out on our channel. Okay, where it's office style. RPG characters talking about their you adventures. told me about that. Yes. Oh, yeah. So we have just ordered a bunch more costumes. We I want the Confession Cam them. RPG. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be really That's good. That's going to be fantastic. Our supporters run the game with Jake, play by post, to figure out what the characters have done. And then we're going to see how they feel about it in the show. <laughs> yeah, you're you're all nuts, which is yeah. great. <laughs> Driving down to Palmyra, New Jersey for a three-day con at a church. That's yeah. going to be wonderful. It's going to be we're great. Looking forward to it. You're really insane. Good. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. In the afternoon, I went and played a BX. It was advertised as Beck Me, but it was just BX uh, session uh, with the guy who runs ShireCon in Connecticut. That happens in September of every year. Tom was a really good game master. This was actually my first time playing Basic since running my grandfather through uh, the Haunted Keep in the Moldvay Basic set way, way, way back. So... This is kind of fun. We did group initiative. We went through rolling the initiative around the table. And I played a halfling. And basic expert, you do not have split race class. So I just played a halfling. And he was all about being ambitious and just wanted to go get shiny cool treasure. He was a lot of fun. We all ended up surviving. And that was a blast. Uh, I'm not sure how we did, especially because we had somebody who was rolling for initiative who literally had a three dexterity. And he won a couple of the roles while we were playing the game, which blew my mind. He actually won an initiative role with a dexterity modifier of negative three. That was fun. One of my great regrets is while we were playing, Frank Menser actually walked by. I wanted to give a shout out to, I was trying to be very, very gracious to the people who were there as guests and didn't want to cost them in any way. And so I didn't do that. Probably should have said, hello, we're playing basic and seen what he said. I've seen some, I missed his talk, but I've seen some of the folks talking about some of the stuff that he was talking about. He seems like a really gracious and wonderful person. And so that was kind of cool. Uh, and after we got done the basic game, it was time for us to go home. It was still sleeting, snowing out that way. And as we were driving back towards New Jersey, it all turned to rain. But it was a great time, full day, uh, ran two different game sessions. I'm a little bit bummed that the Dungeon Crawl Classics funnel was canceled. Apparently all the DCC games were canceled, so whoever was going to run it 
was seemed to be unable to have come. But it was a really neat, small little con. It wasn't a huge crowd, but there were games you could jump into all over the place. Some really neat people to talk to. Some very good vendors. I wish they would have had a little bit more traffic for some of the cool stuff that they had. But for a start, Philly Area Gaming Expo really did a really good job job with their first year of this con. And in a lot of ways, it gives me a model of the types of things that I can do with the Kleza con coming up in April. And not the least of which is I made some good contacts for vendors to say, hey, come on out. You can sell some stuff here. And that should be a lot of fun. I'm very glad that I went. I hope they do it again next year. Uh, and I hope to be in contact with them over the course of the next few months and over the next year to see if there's any way I can help them as they grow. Or maybe they can help me as I try to get my feet under me uh, and planning this small con in April of this year. So it should be a blast. Tomorrow, I am going to be recording my adventurous review. Actually, I might do that this afternoon. And then I'll get it up to the channel as soon as I can. Until we see each other again, folks. Happy playing, everyone.